Hello everyone, my name is Ms. Ho and I am a physics teacher. So, what we're going to be doing in this video is we are going to be learning how the following linear motion equations were derived. What equations are we looking at? We're looking at these three. A equals V minus U over T. S equals UT plus half AT squared. And V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Now, for those of you who are taking your examinations like uh, SPM or IGCSE O levels, do you actually need to know how these formula were derived? You actually don't. You need to focus on how to use this formula. But I know that there are some of you who are like, oh, I cannot work with this formula unless I know where they come from and I know that they are true. So don't worry. That's what this video is for. It's to put your worries at rest. We're going to see how these formula were derived. But before we start deriving this formula, we must first know what each of these symbols mean. S is displacement with SI unit of meters. T is time, SI unit, seconds. U and V are both velocities. But because there's going to be a change in velocities when it comes to using these equations, U is the initial velocity measured in meters per second, and V, also in meters per second, represents the final velocity. A is the acceleration with its SI unit, meters, Per second squared. So now let's take a look at how these formula were derived. So the two basic formula which you need to know before we start deriving the other formula are these two. A equals v minus u over t and s equals half u plus v t. First of all we must remember what linear motion is. Linear motion refers to motion in a straight line specifically with constant acceleration. It is only for objects moving with constant acceleration that you can use these equations to solve problems. Let's start with the formula on the left, which is A equals V minus U over T. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write because it's a Jamboard and it's easier for me to write and type out um, the working over here. So you must remember that acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So rate means over time. So this means it is the change in velocity divided by time. So acceleration is how quickly the velocity changes. And the unit is measured as meters per second every second. Change in velocity means how much the velocity changes. So that's why you have an initial velocity and a final velocity. V minus U in this case refers to this change in velocity. So I'm just going to tidy up the... Uh, Jamboard here a little bit. Again, remember that the change in velocity here is how much the velocity has changed. What's the difference in velocity? And that's why it is the final velocity, which is v, minus the initial velocity, which is u. And this is, of course, divided by time. So this formula is really basic, and you should be able to see straight away why the formula is as such. For the one on the right, s equals half u plus v t. This is not in the list of the three equations just now. Although this is a linear motion equation, this is not a preferred formula to use when solving problems because this formula does not include acceleration among all these symbols in this equation. However, it is linear motion, and I'll show you. So this formula, one of the best ways for me to demonstrate this is actually by drawing a graph. So I want you to imagine if, let's say, this is a graph that shows us how much the velocity has changed. Assuming, remember, of course, if it's moving with um, constant acceleration, that means the rate of change of the velocity is constant, so that should be a straight line. Okay, imagine it's straight. Okay. So the initial velocity, of course, is the starting velocity. Let's mark it over here. And let's say this is the final velocity. And the time refers to the time it takes for u to change to become v. So what is this? Why is it like this? Because this is actually derived from the velocity formula. So let's recall. Velocity is actually measured as displacement over time. Now, this formula can only be used in two situations, when the velocity is constant or if you're calculating average velocity. However, if the velocity is changing, you cannot use this formula directly because if the velocity is changing, you know which value of velocity do you put in here, right? 
So I'm going to write this as short form, V equals S over T. Now, in this particular situation, you can see that the velocity is changing. It is changing at a constant rate, but still changing nevertheless. Let's rewrite this formula now. So you get S equals to V times T. So in this particular situation where the object is moving with increasing velocity at a constant rate, and only when it's at a constant rate, we can actually calculate the average velocity by taking half V plus V. So in this situation and this situation only, to calculate the average velocity, you can take the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by 2, or be written as half u plus v. So what we've done here is we've taken this half u plus v and we have substituted it inside v. So this goes inside here. That's how we get s equals half u plus v times t. So that's how this basic formula was derived. But if you remember the list we looked at earlier, this was not on the list, correct? Because this is not one of the preferred linear motion equations, like I mentioned earlier, because the acceleration is not included in here. And we would prefer to use a formula with acceleration A inside the formula so that we will remember, oh, okay, this applies only when you have a single value of acceleration, meaning constant acceleration. However, to derive the other formula, we do need this basic formula. So these are the two formula we're going to be working with. So now let's see how we can derive the other two formula. And these are the two basic formula which we need in order to derive the other formula. So let's go to the next slide. I have already put the two formula in here. So I'm going to label the first one as formula number one, and this is formula number two. From formula number one, we're going to make V the subject which means that we're going to bring t up, so you have at equals v minus u. We'll bring u over to the other side so that v is all on its own. And we'll rewrite so that v is on our left side, so v equals u plus at. So we'll label this as formula number 3. What we'll do next is we will substitute formula number 3 inside formula number 2. What does this mean? You can see over here, v equals u plus at. We will substitute this inside the V in our second formula. So this is what it's going to look like. You're going to have S equals half U plus, I'm going to change color here so that's a little easier to see, V equals U plus AT, correct? So this becomes U plus AT, close the bracket, and we still have T on the outside. Now we're going to open the bracket, and you can see within the bracket, it's U plus U plus AT. So you'll have half. 2u plus at times t. Opening the bracket, you will have half times 2u times t. And secondly, half times at times t. Opening it some more, you'll find that half times 2, of course, will give you 1. And that's how we get ut plus half at squared. And this is S. And that's how we got the second formula in our list just now. So you get S equals ut plus half at squared. Now let's see how to derive the third formula. So I'm going to change color just so that it's something different. I'm still going to label this as formula number one and this will be formula number two. This time we're going to rewrite formula number two making t the subject. So from here you can see that all you need to do is swap the positions of a and t, giving you t equals v minus u over a. Let's label this as formula number three in this slide. So what we're going to do is we are going to substitute t as v minus u over a inside formula number two. So putting number three into number two, we will get S equals half u plus v. I'm going to change color here so that it's a little bit clearer. You'll have v minus u divided by a. So if you're looking at this, you're like, okay, mm, how do we simplify this? So let me just show you. This can also be written as half v plus u because u plus v and v plus u, they're the same thing, right? So this becomes v minus u divided by a. 
Now, if you can recall what you learned in maths, let me write it over here just as a reminder. If you have a plus b times a minus b, you will get a squared minus b squared, remember? So if you look over here, you have oh, b plus u and b minus u, which means that if you have b plus u times b minus u, you will get b squared minus u squared. So what we can do is we can substitute b plus u and b minus u with b squared minus u squared. So let me write that over here. So you'll have half times v squared minus u squared over a. So of course, if you have this, you remember that it's multiplication, right? So 1 times b squared minus u squared, that's on top, and 2 times a goes at the bottom, so you can actually combine 2 and a together. To simplify, 2a can go up, let's put s on this side, so 2a goes up, so we get 2as equals v squared minus u squared, and then bring it over, you have u squared plus 2as equals v squared. Now, of course, we would prefer to make uh, the symbol on the left be the shorter one. Let me just write it over here. You'll have b squared equals u squared plus 2as. And that's how we're able to derive the third formula. So, this is how these three formula were derived. And these three formula are what you use in order to solve questions involving linear motion calculations. If you would like to find out more about how to use these formula to solve problems, check out my video on using linear motion equations to solve calculation problems. I hope you found this video helpful and educational. Don't forget to click like and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Physics Rocks. Thanks for watching and happy studying.